So it goes way back, right? So midpoint and distance is the two formulas you need to know for that section. Midpoint would have been x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And then the distance is y2 minus, for x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So for 1, you should have gotten the midpoints, negative 1 half, negative 3 halves, and the distance squared of 106, which, if it can be reduced, needs to be. 2... All right, 2 is the line, okay? You just got to do y equals mx plus b. So the funny thing about this question is it's probably one of the most missed questions of the graphs last year because you got so focused on everything else, you forgot how to graph a line, okay? So negative 4 is where I start, and then I go up 5 and to the right one, plot your point. So that obviously is going to be on the open-ended and not with the calculator part. All the graphing is open-ended, no calculator. Number three, domain. So for this, you're setting your denominator not equal to zero. This has to be factored. X can equal three or negative two. And then you have to put it in interval notation. So negative infinity to negative two. Union, negative two to three. Union three to positive infinity. Four is your functions. And four says F times G. So you're going to multiply those out. 30X squared plus 74X plus 36. Five is broken down into parts. Obviously, I'm not giving you all of those parts, but you'll get one of those and they might be different. So A is just adding the two, but keeping the X as X. B is subtracting. C is multiplying. D is dividing. F is plugging the G in for the F. And F is taking negative four, plugging in a G and plugging that into F. So those are all here. Okay, A is 2X squared plus 4X plus 9. B would have been 1. Mm -hmm. So C said F times G, right? And and which one? And E is F of G. So when it's inside parentheses like that, you have to take this and plug it into that expression. Whereas this one, you're just multiplying the two together. So if it's a composite function, which is this or this, the open dot is the same thing as the parentheses. You've got to take whatever's on the right and plug it into the one on the left. So for E, you were taking G and plugging it into F. So E was X squared plus 2X plus 4. Anywhere there was an X on F, you had to take that and plug it back in. Any other questions on any of those? Okay, 6 was your inverse. So remember inverse, you, you first replace f of x with y. And then you, so let's do this. Inverse, so replace f of x with y. Switch the x and the y. Solve for the new y. And then replace y with f negative 1 of x. So for 6, you should have gotten f negative 1 of x equals x plus 1 over 2. So if it was open-ended, I would have taken either answer, but this is multiple choice, so it's going to be written like the first way. You don't need to split that one. Number 7, the center and the radius. So the center comes from the parentheses. So if this is h, I mean x minus h plus y minus k squared equals r squared, then the center is hk, so you change the sign on both of what follows the x and what follows the y to get the center, and then you square root the number that's by itself, so the square root of 64, which would have been 8. Number 8, you have to distribute the negative and then combine your like terms. Standard form is the i coming last. Number nine, you had to FOIL it out, change your i squared to a negative one, and then again, write it in standard form, so it'd be negative 15 minus 42i. Questions on any of those? Okay. So 10, this is where you have to rationalize. So I had to multiply both the top and the bottom by the bottom, but I'm sorry, by the conjugate of the bottom. So 4 minus 3i means I have to multiply times 4 plus 3i in both the top and the bottom. Foil out the top. The shortcut on the bottom is a squared plus b squared when there's an i, which would have been 25. And then it will be written like this. It will be written split. 
4 over 25 plus 53 over 25 I? It's going to be multiple choice. Yeah. So if it wasn't multiple choice, I would take either answer. But it's multiple choice, so it is going to be written like that. 11 max min. So remember, you want to look at what's in front of the X squared or the A. If it's positive, it's a minimum. If it's negative, it's a maximum. Use negative B over 2A to find the X coordinate of your vertex. And then plug it back in to get the Y. And it's going to say find the coordinates of the midpoint, which is the X and the Y. So in this case, there's a minimum and it's at 1, negative 7. Leading coefficient test. So you want to look at the highest exponent. If the highest exponent is even and that number is positive, then they both point up. If it's negative and even, then they both point down. If it's positive and the exponent is odd, then it rises to the right and falls to the left. And if it's negative and that's the highest exponent is odd, then it rises to the left and falls to the right. So in this case, I get negative x to the fifth is the highest. Five is odd and negative five is negative. So it goes up to the left and down to the right. 13, you had to factor this. So this is four terms, which means factor by grouping. And you would have gotten negative 4, 1, and negative 1. 14, you had to set each of those terms equal to 0. You would have gotten plus and minus 0, plus and minus root 5, and 9. And then you will need to do the multiplicity, which is how many times the 0 appears. There are two zeros there. There's 1 root 5, 1 negative root 5, and 1 9. If it's even, it bounces off or turns around. So it's going to turn around at 0, but it's going to cross through at root 5, negative root 5, and 9. <clears throat> Long division, you want to put that negative 3x minus 2 on the outside. Divide it into 9x squared minus 15x minus 14. And I get negative 3x plus 7, no remainder. If there was a remainder, I just put it over what you're dividing by. So it would be plus whatever my re remainder is over negative 3x minus 2. <clears throat> 16 was synthetic division, so I changed the sign up because it says x minus 2. I put the 2 on the outside. Synthetic division, make sure I add in zeros for x to the 4th, x to the 2nd, and x. And you should have gotten x to the 4th plus 2x to the 3rd plus 5x squared plus 10x plus 20 with a remainder of 44. So 44 over x minus 2. 17, it says solve the equation given that 5 is a 0. So if 5 is a 0, then 5 goes to the outside. I divide synthetically, and I should get 0 as a remainder. And then I take what's on the bottom there, which was 3x squared minus 19x minus 14, and I factor it. So this time I multiplied by the first and last. 3 times negative 14 is negative 42. Found the factors of that that add to negative 19, which are negative 21 and positive 2. And then I plug them into place in negative 19. There's now four terms factored by grouping, and I got x minus 7 and 3x plus 2. Solve those, and I get negative 2 thirds and positive 7. So I include the 5 as one of my zeros. It'd be 5, 7, and negative 2 thirds. 18 x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. So the vertical asymptotes come from the bottom. Set your denominator equal to 0. And those are where your vertical asymptotes are. So horizontal asymptotes, remember there was three cases. So if I had g of x equals, and it's x to the n for the numerator and x to the m for the denominator, if n is bigger than m, so if the exponent in the top is bigger than the one in the bottom, then there's no horizontal asymptote. If n equals m, then my horizontal asymptote is the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. And if n is less than m, then my asymptote is at y equals 0. So in this case, the exponent on the top is the same as the bottom. So I take the leading coefficient from the top, which is 4, over the leading coefficient from the bottom, 
which is 2. y equals 4 over 2 becomes y equals 2. All right, then we've got graphing. So all the graphing, if you want to put a little star next to it, all the graphing is obviously going to be open-ended and no calculator. Okay, open-ended, no calc. Okay, so far there's no calculator. So I'll, when you get to the interest problems is when you're going to get it. So this is just setting up a table. I can plug in, if it's exponential, I can plug in for the x's, negative 1, 0, and 1. I get 3, 1, and 1 third. Plot your points, connect your curve. For the logs, you should be plugging in for y. So this is the time that you want to plug in for y. So the y is the negative 1, the 0, and the 1. I take my exponential function, which would have been y equals log base 5 of x minus 1. Convert it to exponential. Solve for x. And then take those y's and plug them in one at a time. So I'd get 1 fifth plus 1. I'd get 1 plus 1, and I'd get 5 plus 1, and that's where I get my points from. Okay, number 2 starts the log. So what do I bring 3 to the power of 2 to get to 1 9? It would be a negative 2. I need to square it, and I need to move it to the bottom. 23 ln of e. Anytime we've got ln of e, they're going to cancel out and leave you with the exponent. So in this case, it's just 16x. Twenty four, twenty five, and twenty six. You're expanding. Twenty seven would be condensing, and I don't know why this test generator says the same set of instructions. Okay, for both, but you're condensing. So if I've got it as one expression, like twenty four, when I expand a multiplication, it becomes addition. So I'd get log base two of four plus log base two of x, and log base two of four is two because you can raise two to the second power to get to four. 25 ln of e to the 6 would be minus ln of 11 because division becomes subtraction. And then ln cancels and leads you the exponent, but if you don't catch it, the 6 would get bumped to the front. So it would be 6 ln of e minus ln of 11. ln of e cancels out and becomes 1. So it would be 6 minus ln of 11. So either way, you should get the same thing. 26, you've got multiplication and division this time. So the multiplication separates as addition, ln, or sorry, log base w of 11 plus log base w of x, and then division is subtraction, so minus log base w of 2. Mm -hmm. Are these going to be open ended or? Uh, no, these are multiple choice still. Huh? Yep. Uh, 28, or 20, sorry, 27 is condensing, so you should combine them. So there's one ln. The 8 gets the exponent on the A, the 5 the exponent on the B, and the minus means division. So I'd get ln of A to the 8th over B to the N, B to the 5, sorry. Questions on any of those? Okay, 28, 3 to the 6 minus 3x equals 1 over 27. So if I change the base of that 1 over 27 to be 3 to the negative 3, then the exponents, uh, the bases are the same. I set the exponents equal to each other, so you would have gotten 6 minus 3x equals negative 3, and then solve for x, and you get x of 3. 29, you have more than one log on one side, so you have to condense first. So that's, multipli that's addition, which means when I condense it, it means multiplication. So I'd foil out the x plus 5 and the x minus 1, and I end up with, this says log, base 4 of x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 2. And then the 4 comes over and picks up the 2, so 4 squared would equal x squared plus 4x minus 5. So that 4 squared becomes 16. Subtract the 16 and I get x squared plus 4x minus 21, which gets factored to x plus 7 and x minus 3. So the answers from that are negative 7 and positive 3, but what's wrong with negative 7? I can't have a negative in these spaces here. So if I get an answer that when I plug it back in, it would be negative, then I rule out that answer. So negative 7 plug back in is going to tell me to get log base 4 of negative 2, which you cannot do. So 
So I rule out that seven and I get the three. Be careful on that. Obviously, these are multiple choice, which means there's no partial credit. And guaranteed, there's going to be a choice that has negative seven and three and a choice that has three. You've got to know to cancel out the negative seven. Yep. We would um, end up with a number like negative three, and then since it's plus five, it'll be positive. It'd be but it'd be bad in the other one. So x minus one would still be negative. So it has to be good for has both. To be good, for both. good. Okay. Yeah, good question. 30 is your one to one property with log. So you've got log on the same, log of the same base on either side of the equal sign. Just get rid of the log and set x plus four equal to four x minus two. Solve for x, and I get x equals two. Yep. When you plug them back in here, it should be zero or negative. So the answer itself could be negative if, the, if that wasn't an x minus one, let's say, if it was an x plus one, and I plugged in a negative one. No, I plugged in zero, let's say. Zero by itself would not be okay, but if I plug in zero, Zero plus five is five, which is fine. And if that was an X plus one, zero plus one would be one. That's fine. But if it was just, it's when you plug it back in, it can't be negative and it can't be zero. All right, 31, determine which quadrant of negative 105 would go backwards past the 90, which would be in quadrant two. 32, find a positive negative, a positive angle less than 360 degrees. So it has to be smaller than two pi. If I added 2 pi there, it would be bigger than 360. So this time you had to subtract 2 pi. And it's still positive. 33, you are finding secant. So secant is the, con the reciprocal of cosine. If I give you a coordinate point, the x is the cosine on the unit circle. And the, see it says on the unit circle. Not in everywhere is it like that, but on the unit circle, the x is the cosine and the y is the sine. So I just have to flip the cosine and rationalize it, and I get secant. 34 says use the unit circle to find the value of the trig function. So 7 pi over 2 converts into 3 over at 3 and pi over 2. Remember the evens are on the right, the odds are on the left. So 3 would be here plus another half pi puts it down at the point 0, negative 1. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, flip negative one, and it's still negative one. Use the reference angle. Oh, this is not right. Use the reference angle. That is the reference angle, but you got to find the sine of pi over three. And pi over three would be the point one half root three over two. So the sine is root three over two. Uh huh. Uh, so what did you do? So you just need to use the reference angle with that. So negative pi or negative 2 pi over 3 would be here. The reference angle just means like the fact that it's pi over 3, you could figure out what your point is, right? Every pi over 3 is one third. I mean, one half root 3 over 2. And then just know that it's negative, which means it puts it in that third quadrant, which means it would be a negative root 3 over 2. So the negative angles, there's two ways to look at it. One is go in reverse. The other is use your unit circle. And remember, I'm going to give you a unit circle. So I would find positive 2 pi over 3 and then fold my unit circle, like in my mind, or even take a piece of paper, fold it in half, I don't care. And where it overlaps, which is here, is where the negative version of that angle would be. So I would know it's in the third quadrant, and I know that all students take calculus. So T is the only thing that's positive, which means that sign should be a negative root 3 over 2. 36, now we're dealing with inverse. So you got to remember your intervals here. The intervals on the inverse, remember we have to restrict intervals on inverse. So for sine and tangent, we use the positive angles in the first quadrant, and we use the negative angles In the fourth quadrant. So this is for the negative ones. This is for the inverses. The sine of negative one, the cosine of negative one, the tangent of negative one. And then for cosine, you use first and second. So I would use two pi over three, three pi over four, five pi over six. 
end pi. So maybe when you get your unit circle, you want to write that on there for yourself. Okay, add those negative angles on, add the tangents on if you want. So where on the unit circle that's restricted like that is sine root 2 over 2 would be at pi over 4. Cosine negative root 3 over 2 would be at negative, I mean at 5 pi over 6. And tangent negative root 3, tangents that are root 3 are all the over 3s, would be at negative, negative pi over 3. Well, you can circle you give us, it's going to be filled out. Yep, I'm going to give it to you filled out. Merry Christmas. Yeah. All right, number 39. Point on the terminal side is given. So 18 and 24 means that I went to the right and I went up. So 18, 24, I would close in my triangle. And cosine, in order to find cosine, I have to find that missing side, which ends up being 30. I did the Pythagorean theorem. And cosine is 18 over 30, which reduces to 3 over 5. The good news is either numbers are smaller. Okay, and then 40, it says, give it, find the cosine if the tangent of an angle is 2 ninths. So I drew out a triangle. I put two opposite, 9 adjacent. Find the missing side, which is the square root of 85. And then the cosine of that same angle would be 9 over root 85, which gets rationalized. Okay, then we get to sum and difference. So remember, you want to know your pattern. Sine is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Positive, negative stays the same. Cosine is cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Positive, negative changes. And then tangent matches the sine in the top and one plus or the opposite in the bottom of the product. So 75 could be 30 and 45. Sine of 30, sine of 45, cosine of 45. Plus cosine of 45, sine of 30. And then square root it. So the, this is still multiple choice, and the way it's written will be like this. They took out the root 2, so it's root 2 parentheses, root 3 plus 1 over 4. 42, that tangent, I would add, so 5 plus 25 is 30, tangent of 30 is root 3 over 3. And that's where, again, your unit circle would come in handy. And then the graphing. So you're going to have to graph using transformations. They could be... Parabolas, they could be square roots, they could be cubic functions, um, and you've got to know all your transformations. So whatever's on the front, so if it's x plus or minus h squared plus or minus k, right? Whatever's on the front, if it's positive, it's pointing up. If it's negative, it's upside down. The a tells you if it's stretched. So if it's greater than 1, then it's stretched vertically. So it's tall or narrow. And if it's less than 1, like a fraction, then it's shrunk. So flat or wide. The plus and minus on the inside is what? Inside the parentheses. What kind of shift does that cause? Inside the parentheses. So in this case, the plus two. Yeah. Good. Horizontal. And it's always opposite, right? So if it's plus, it moves left. And if it's negative, it moves right. And then the last one is after the parentheses or after the square root or outside of the um, cubic function. And this is good vertically. So up, it moves. Or positive, it moves up. And negative, it moves down. So that's true for all of them. Just be careful. Make sure you get the right parent function. You don't want to put a parabola on 44 and get the question wrong. Forty-five, same thing. So this time it's moving to the left. If it's sorry, it's moving to the right three, down two, and it's cubic, which means it points up to the right, down to the left. And then the graphs of sine, cosine, tangent. So you can get any of these. This one is cosecant and tangent, but you could have gotten sine, you could have gotten cosine, you could have gotten secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. You've got to know how to do all of them. So for so cosine, or sorry, cosecant, I graphed cosine. Nope. I graphed sine. A is 2, which is the amplitude. B is pi. Period is 2 pi over B, which would be 2. Multiply times it. For tangent and cotangent, period is pi over b. Yep. For sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant, it's 2 pi over b. Multiply by a fourth, a half, and three-fourths to find your coordinate points. 
And if these points on the x-axis don't match what you want, just cross them out and remark it. I don't care. Like, I just cross it out instead of having to figure out the spacing on it. Yep. If we can, like... So then, uh, plot your points. Make sure you get four asymptotes, three curves. 47. So tangent, I start by setting bx minus c equal to negative pi over 2 and bx minus c equal to positive pi over 2. From the one on the left, I'm going to subtract the period, which is pi over b. From the one on the right, I'm going to add the period, which is pi over b. And then tangent normally points up to the right, down to the left, but this time it's negative, which means it points up left, down, right. If this was cotangent, then the bx minus c gets set equal to what? What do you set bx minus c equal to if it's cotangent? Zero and pi. And then do the same thing. Subtract the period from the one on the left and add the period to the one on the right. And then 48 started your verifying. Hopefully this stuff is kind of familiar to you, but make sure you review your reference sheet, okay? In the top, I would expand that, foil it out, and I ended up with sine squared plus cosine squared plus two sine cosine. The sine squared plus cosine squared became one. 1 plus 2 or 2 sine cosine over 1 plus 2 sine cosine becomes 1. I don't think the ones in your test are hard, but you do need to know your identity. Okay. Forty-nine and fifty-one those duplicated. I can combine my sine and cosine and make it one. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. 50, I distributed the cosecant to each. Cosecant becomes 1 over sine. The sines cancel on the first one, and I get 1 plus cosine over sine, which is 1 plus cotangent. And then everything below here has a calculator. So this is where the calculator comes into play. Like I said yesterday, you'll get it first. So you'll do the interest problems, and the formulas are at the top just like they are here. 53, you had to factor it, ln of both sides, and so you rule out ln of negative 3 because you can't find the log of a negative number, and ln of 2 is 0.69. You're going to get word problems, so you have to use your calculator. So this one says, a boat on a river below a dam, the angle of elevation to the top of the dam is 24 degrees and 8 seconds, so make, or 8 minutes, sorry. Make sure you know how to get that in your calculator. But here... So I set up tangent, the tangent of 24 degrees and 8 minutes equals 2,039 over x. So 2,039 divided by the tangent of 24 degrees and 8 minutes is 4,551.1. Yep. Is there a so these, it's going to go back and forth. Got to be careful. So the star... These don't matter. If, unless you hit the sine, cosine, or tangent buttons, it doesn't matter what mode your calculator's in. But as soon as we get to these, the word problems are, have always been in degrees, so you can count on them probably going to be in degrees. But then these, remember, the trig functions, if it doesn't have a degree symbol, this would be in radians. If it said to find the tangent of 42 degrees, that would be in degrees. And then the inverse ones are always in radians. So if you're hitting a negative 1 button, outside of this, this is my word problem, my word problem, word problem I needed it in, in degrees. But if you're hitting it on those, like, they're always in radian. 